Here's the woman, the gentleman, his daughter, his older daughter was taking care of him. She had always lived in their house. Uh, she had had heart problems. She's the one giving the support to him. She's worried about can her health survive? I mean, can she survive under the uh, effort that she's giving to take care of him? To me, this is a story here. They're both underwater. They're both in water. She's got a huge load she's carrying to keep them from going under. Caregiving can be difficult. I'm not saying that this is what always occurs, but you know, you love this person. What are you going to do? So this is a story. The beauty of hospice is you get to meet people and there's some marvelous people in this world. This is a gentleman, he was a postal carrier. He and his wife had 115 foster children. Not five, not 10, 115. His first foster child, they adopted. And he was the one caring for his father. Uh, just a great man. I don't know who of you have been in the uh, Schoharie Valley out near west of Albany, but it's a gorgeous area. This gentleman lived out near the Schoharie Creek and Valley. It was beautiful. It was a beautiful, beautiful area. And this past summer, I drive out there, and he was always welcoming. And he brought the inside into his house. This is what I'm trying to convey here. Uh, on the other, on the right side, things are a little bleak. You got snow. You got oxygen tanks. His prognosis isn't good, but he's he's a wonderful man. He left his house. His wife came out, needed desperately to talk. They had been married for many, many years. She's losing or doesn't know how to handle because she's losing all these memories that they've shared over many years. And so this is called torn. She was torn between her old life and what was happening. Had a fellow for, um, who had been on hospice once for six months, came off it, came back on, and I saw him for probably eight months during that time. Supposedly hospice is a six-month diagnosis by your doctor. You, you have six months or less. Uh, his sister was taking care of him. He was a special needs guy from Long Island. Uh, but really a nice man. Uh, very, very thin. He was about 5'10". He was probably 88 pounds a number of times when I took him somewhere. And he always, he was very limber and he would squat down. But the appalling thing was one day, a hot, humid day, he's got lung cancer. I walk into their apartment, it's very small, very constrained, and he's down on his, squatted down, so I know immediately that he's having a harder time breathing. He's got a box fan right next to him, blowing air on him. And that was appalling. That was appalling to see. So this is my, I call it air. And obviously, there's air there. We're surrounded by it. He's in a bottle. And I don't know what it, how difficult it must be to somebody to uh, be gasping for breath. Hospice, an objective is that you comfortably die in your home. Sometimes people have something happen and they get put in a hospital. He got put in a hospital for the last four or five days. And I call this 
full of life because I think I learned more from him than anyone I've seen. With an art background, I'm not sure of this one in terms of how I'm going to judge it artistically. Telling this story to me, this works extremely well. Full of life. He was within a day of dying. He had his favorite niece. His family supported him in the hospital marvelously. They were there every day, 24 hours. His niece had a little baby. Sophia was her name. And she was held up to him. And he, he's essentially not communicating at this point. He's what we're, the word is actively dying. And he gave out the most beautiful smile when this baby was shown to him. He was full of life within hours of dying. So hospice is a stage, it's not the end. There is an end, it's a passing, but that person is still full of life until that point. And I've run into a number of children who act far more mature than they should. In fact, I remember one eighth grader who was uh, graduating that day that I was there, her grandfather was dying. And she had said goodbye to him. Uh, she was mature. But this is my concept of what it feels to a child to lose a parent. And what I've done here, it's the immensity of it. Uh, I lost my mother when I was 15. I remember my dad taking us, I and my two brothers, to uh, Redwood Grove in California, which was a cathedral. And this is a cathedral here. We'll go back to methods and materials. Uh, doing things with a computer, I had at one point thought, well, the life is shattered. No. So I can obviously shatter the picture. But that wasn't what I was trying to achieve. It's the, it's not emptiness, it's the expanse of things that a child will see. The criteria in viewing art has changed. Uh, I'm new to it. This is my first chance to have an exhibit. I'm extremely grateful to Sister Joanne for, and the art committee for having picked what I've submitted. But I, I know that I view art differently than I did previously. Uh, and I liked your Buddha quote. <laughs> and all I know is I've gained way more than I've given. And I think that uh, if anybody has any thoughts of volunteering for hospice, it's, it's rewarding. Thank you very much, and thank you for being here.